Welcome folks. Uh, getting back to this uh, HEI distributor or high energy ignition distributor that General Motors made from about 75 on until the uh, computer stuff started to take over and whatnot. And this in particular installment here I'm going to be focusing more on things to be watching out for before we actually start taking this thing apart. And uh, some, some critical things actually uh, will be mentioned in this particular video that will help you from a lot of headaches and maybe some destroyed engine parts at the same time. Alright, so uh, I guess it was started with uh, maybe the distributor um, drive gear end play. Um, this is just a stock unit. It's probably never been out of the vehicle. It's out of a Chevy uh, 350 cubic inch or 5.7 liter engine. And if you notice here, you can actually hear it, but in here, that should be minimized. I'll be showing you how to do that when we actually rebuild this thing and put it back together. But that's pretty excessive when you've got about a sixteenth inch of play in here. So things to be watching out for, like I say, check all these things before you actually take your distributor apart if you're going to be doing that, that is. And see just up front what you're dealing with. That way when you put it back together you'll, you'll, you'll know what you're, um, you're up against and what you'll have to be doing in order to get the parts and pieces together in order to correct that. But that's way too much. I think you should be down and around about the ten thousandths of an inch, you know, quarter of a millimeter kind of thing. Very little. Uh, you got to take into consideration that aluminum expands quite a bit more than steel. Uh, so that's another thought. I haven't really detailed exactly how much I'm going to put in here for clearance, but uh, we'll get on to that when that time comes. Okay, that's one thing you should be watching out for is the excessive amount, and especially up at the top end there, it's doing the same thing. Same amount of clearance banging around underneath the, uh, the part that connects onto the distributor shaft there, or the uh, the weights and everything connect at the top end. Alright, so there's uh, the first thing. Another thing is uh, the firing end or the tip of the rotor where it circles around inside the distributor cap in order to transfer the high voltage into the distributor cap terminal and on its way to the spark plug it goes through the wire. Uh, there's a timing thing there. Um, I did count the number of teeth on here on this helical gear here. It's 13 teeth. And there's an indexing uh, thing that they thought about um, putting into this gear so that you'd put it back together correctly. If you notice here on this side, I'll spin it around, you'll just notice one kind of a dot hole or whatever. That's where the uh, the split pin is actually securing the gear to the shaft of this thing, this distrib distributor here. Now if I spin it around 180 degrees, you notice there's two. And I've highlighted this bottom one here with chalk. It's actually a drilled hole that only goes part way in. What that's telling me, and probably you should be watching out for this as well, is that when you put it back together, should line up with the rotor tip at the other end of the distributor. Now what will happen is if you put that 180 degrees with that drilled dimple on there indicating that it should be lining up with here and you put 180 degrees out of, out of time then what will happen is you'll be in a different part of this uh, where the, the teeth are because it's 13 teeth instead of like here the split pin here that secures it is between two teeth and on the other side if you look there it's in line with one of the teeth so you got to make sure when you put this back together that that, that drilled dimple timing indicator on the gear matches up with the, uh, the firing tip of the rotor. All right, so there's that. That's taken care of now. Um, I did highlight these gear teeth here, but before I get into why I did that, um, I'll be showing you, or maybe more telling you than showing you. I don't know if you'll show in the video, but when you take yours out of your engine, uh, we're not dealing with a new one at this point. It's it's a an older one. Uh, a little over 100,000 miles out of zoom on this one. And when you take it out, clean it up with some solvent or what have you and get it nice and dry and clean and look at the wear pattern on there. Usually on one side of the helical gear tooth um, there will be a wear pattern on there and it should be somewhat halfway between the ends of the, where the, the gear teeth are actually cut in this thing. Um, what you're looking for is minimal wear. It shouldn't be showing like a big hollow on each of the teeth. And as, as, as well, if it's wearing really well it'll be a kind of shiny surface and it won't be all like really rough. If it's really rough and the metal shavings are flying off there you know that it's uh, probably same kind of wear tooth and uh, or wear pattern on the gear teeth that are actually part of the camshaft. Okay, So if this one actually here does look nice and polished and it's not much wear on at all for the mileage that's on this thing so it's in really good condition it's probably reusable. Before I forget if you're going to an aftermarket camshaft, performance camshaft, what have you, or any camshaft for that matter, always check with the camshaft manufacturer as to what 
gear material you should use with it. Because if you use the wrong material and maybe even the wrong heat treating process on that material, it could destroy the, the, the gear that's uh, actually part of the camshaft. And that gets rather expensive, not to mention the headaches you have of trying to replace a whole camshaft and everything. So it's better to have a, if something's going to wear faster, try to get something that's uh, on this end of things, on the distributor drive gear, because to replace one of these is just a matter of removing the distributor and then basically putting a new gear on here. It's that easy. But if it's the camshaft and you destroy the gear on that, oh boy, expensive and headaches all in one. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, that's the biggest warning I can give you is to make sure that the, the gear material and the heat treating process that they use on that, that gear is 100% uh, uh, good for your camshaft gear. Okay? Otherwise, like I say, headache city. All right, uh, why I highlighted these, uh, there's gear teeth on here. I might have to rub a bit more chalk on it, just so that where I rubbed on it there, I had it pre-chalked. All right. <clears throat> so I want to show you two ways to tell you whether it's a right-hand helical gear or a left-hand helical gear. If you can see here, they are on an angle. They're not a straight, straight across tooth. Okay. Hopefully, they can hold it still enough. But there's two ways I'll, <clears throat> excuse me, show you. If you see the teeth while viewing from top, they much like a coarse screw thread. If they're going this way. Uh, just like a screw thread, a right-handed screw thread, like a bolt, then that's a right-handed gear. But if that doesn't do it for you, you've actually got, uh, let's see, I'm going to have to see if I can jack this thing up a little bit so it's somewhat level. I'll get an old screwdriver here and help hold it up. Higher is even better. Uh, what do I have that's higher? Um, I'm looking. Here we go. this wheel here and hopefully it'll stay put. All right, we'll s hopefully you can see on those uh, gear teeth that I've um, highlighted with the chalk. Okay, like I was saying, if you screw it this way, viewed from above, it'll be right hand gear. Now you've got two hands. And if you notice the way your thumbs and index finger make an angle, unless you're one of those really double jointed type people where you can fold your thumb back, but normally like this, just place your hand as the shaft is horizontal or left and right and put your hand up against her. So I'll try my left one first. And you can see these gear teeth are on this angle here, okay? So if I put my left hand on there, geez, it doesn't match up, okay? Now if I put my right hand on there, oh boy, that's something, isn't it? Almost, uh, you can actually put your thumb to the, the same angle as the gear is cut on. So that's telling me that's a right hand gear. So the only reason I'm really telling you this is in case it's a... Well, you haven't really noticed, but uh, there could be the gear teeth cut on the opposite angle, meaning a, a left-handed gear as opposed to a right one, and I'm not sure if Oldsmobile and the rest of them do that or not, so if you do get a replacement gear or whatever, make sure that it's the right amount of gear teeth The count, this one being 13 gear teeth around the circumference, as well as uh, it has to have the right helix angle and the right, uh, well it's probably a diametral pitch gear from what I gather if it's standard and not metric. In that case, it'll be a module type gear, I guess, cut gear. Um, but there's the easiest way to remember if you're trying to do it. Just make sure that the shaft or whatever the uh, the gear is is on is this way, and just walk up to it. If it's a big gear, say six feet in diameter, you can do it with those too. Just basically put your hand, either hand up there, and whatever hand matches the angle to your index finger, as as your index finger is pointing that way. There's uh, how you tell left hand gear from right hand gear. So that's a right hand gear as well as it also screws like a right hand thread. So I'll leave you with uh, those few things there and I'll add some videos as we go along and mention a few different things that'll help you out and perhaps save you some money and a few headaches along the way. So I hope you enjoyed what I had to say in this video for today folks and uh, with that said and done have yourself a nice day and uh, bye for now.